Hey, good morning, fellas. I believe it's the uh, 23rd or the 24th. It's uh, Thursday, probably the 24th, maybe the 23rd. Uh, 537, about 64 degrees. So I, I got some of my what we call in the military, used to call in the military. I don't know if they do it now. Snivel gear, you know, where you're like, Ooh, I need some. I'm cold. All right. All right. Anyways, <clears throat> uh, this one is mostly for the ladies. And just to explain them how they uh, manipulate all of us but in particular how they want to manipulate women and I'll use a, a set of examples uh, the first example is the good side of being part of a big family it seems that uh, there was a man really drunk down where my swagger my mother-in-law lives and he was running around the uh, community that they live in with the machete in his hand, banging on cars and causing trouble. And they don't usually call the police down there. So my wife and I went down there. By my time my wife and I got down there, several of her family members were already there. So we bundled her up. And she's sleeping quite comfortably at our house. Um, I don't hope we don't ever get to the point to where you're more afraid to call the cops than to call the cops. But that's a reality in Mexico. And that's not too far away from my front door. The other thing is, slowly over time, ladies, they have told you that... And they've given you proof that you really don't need a man. So, you don't have to get married. You can go out and have a career. Sleep with whoever you want. Do with whatever you want. And if you need a man, all you have to do is call 911. Get a man to come put a fire out. Get a man to come there and lay his life on the line for you. The difference is you have to live in a city that is a community as well as it's a city. And here's some of the bad examples. Now, I'm not doing this to scare you. I'm doing this because I want you to be able to defend yourselves. And it's just a reality. There aren't enough police officers anymore. You don't forget, don't forget, you know, where they were going to fire the police. There's hundreds and hundreds of thousands of police officers, good men, some not so good, that were willing to go out there and risk their lives for, for duty and community. But those guys are mostly gone. They're in a different, different line of work. The other thing is, you got to ask yourself, Am I living in a community or a city that's corrupt? And the answer to that is yes. And I'll give you an example of out here in El Paso. Here in El Paso, we have not a lot of, a lot of crime statistics because they hide them. <laughs> and on top of that, it's an election year. But I'll give you a good example of how corrupt El Paso is. The police officers, when they're called, whether they want to or not, have a duty and an obligation to come and try to help you. And for the, the most part, they do. So, you would expect the city and the government to at least back them up. But that's not the case. Especially if someone who sits in a chair their whole life, sits, uh, shines a chair with their ass, like the mayor like the community members, like the chief of police, and, that, and I'm not saying the chief of police has anything to do with it, but here's the example. There are over 690 calls to the police department for help for one place in the city where a terrorist gang, prison gang, Trindeagua, TRD, no, TD, TDA, took the place over. They just went in and muscled in like you would do back in the 1910s, 1920s. They muscled all the people out. 
Nobody in the city government, the district attorney, nobody made that a priority. In the meantime, you had these police officers out there going face to face, toe to toe with a hardened prison gang, knowing that they could just take them out and it'd all be over. But they won't let them do that. So only after it made national news here in El Paso and after over 690 calls to the Gateway Inn Hotel in central downtown central El Paso, did they do anything about that? Uh, I can tell you here, and I live in a nice neighborhood, here it takes the police, fire department, after you call 911, I'd say you've got 10 to 12 to 15 minutes before somebody's going to be on scene. And you got to think about it. If you're a person that calls on a regular basis for help and it turns out to be nothing, the police may just be a, nah, let her wait. So I think we have all been lied to. To the point where they're telling us we don't need each other. We don't need families. We will take care of you. The state will take care of you. You go to a state-run institution and you get a degree and you get a job. But what happens later in life when you're out there by yourself, ladies, in a new What would they call it? A new technology comes along and you all of you are getting ready to lose your office jobs. AI, if you're in accounting, if you have anything to do with customer service, they're going to replace you. And in the meantime, they're going to drag their feet. Now, they already know what we all need for that system to work. They need UBI. But you know what? That's got to go... To a vote that's even got to be brought up so somebody's got to write that up in the meantime you're out of a job so once they write that up they have to present it to their committee well no 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 they have to present it to their party the democrats or the uh, republicans or whomever is in charge in your area and they have to decide whether or not it's important enough now all the people that they're talking to it doesn't affect. They, it's not affecting their jobs. They were voted in. They just get to sit there. All they have to do is worry about getting reelected. In the meantime, you don't have a job. You don't have a family. You don't have a community. You can still call the police. What are they going to do? Give you a job? They're not. Anyways, moving on to the point. That thing, in order to have to be a bill... It can take a decade before UBI ever becomes officially part of our system to replace all the lost jobs. In the meantime, we're all going to be fighting for a position. Here we are at the turnaround point. You can see they got the wall almost done. If you can't see right here, uh, take tap in a box, go out and go around. Get back on the sidewalk. Boop. Anyways, what they've done, ladies, is they've made you dependent on the government systems. It's why they encourage women to get divorced. Why it is financially beneficial for a woman to find a guy, marry him, make sure there's no prenup, and then divorce him. Because not only do you get to keep your shit, but you get to leave with half of his shit. And that's why guys don't want to get married. It's not... And if you say prenup, women get offended. Like, as a man, I'm not supposed to protect myself. Anyway, I just think there are so many examples of why you need to be able to defend yourself. And that's not just for the men. That's for the women. And ladies, you have to be absolutely realistic when you're talking about your life. You need something to balance the fighting field, the playing field. You need a gun. You need a knife. You need a shotgun. 
need a rifle. You need a pistol. You need something to balance and level out the playing field. So you at least have a fighting chance. That's all I have to say. These guys, after they've had their lives destroyed, their reputations ruined, financially ruined, made to be a pariah in their community for allegations of what? Sleeping around? Abuse? Mental anguish? All of that kind of stuff. Those are things that used to get ironed out in the family. I can guarantee you, if my mother-in-law said that her son was mean to her, or did something to her that she didn't like, I guarantee you if she told me, I would take care of that problem for her. And that's the difference. My swagger, my mother-in-law, literally cannot call 911 she doesn't know who's on the other end who's going to be listening is it a is will they have the ability to take advantage of her? now here comes this lady running down here i'm going to get out of her way but i don't have to that's because i'm reformed i'm not a bad guy anymore morning ma'am And the average height of a man in the United States is five foot nine. The average height of a woman in the United States is between five foot two and five foot three. How is it possible, ladies, that a man in general who is six inches, half a foot taller than you, how can you outweigh him in good conscience? How can you outweigh? Huh? There it is. That's just one of the reasons guys don't want to deal with women anymore. All right. Love you guys. Stay safe and healthy. Take care of each other if you can. And if you can't, you have to take care of yourselves. And by taking care of yourselves, I mean you have to be able to defend yourself and the people you love. Like a fart in a G-string from West Texas, El Paso. I'm out of here. Bye-bye.